Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're going to be working on our standard paddleboard today. If you remember, uh, a couple of months ago, we went ahead and we put this mount on here. This is a, a rod holder. Um, it's a Scotty mount, so you can rod holders, cameras, you name it, we can put that on there. Uh, since then, we, we went ahead and we mounted this ring, this D-ring. Um, we just wanted something that we could attach a leash to the fishing pole. Um, you could use this for a tie down when we're putting this thing up on the on the truck, whatever. We wanted to put that on. Since then, we have decided we're going to do a few other modifications to this. One modification is going to be way back here. It's another Scotty now. So we're going to put that back here. Now we'll have two. So chances are we're going to fish off the front, use the back one for a camera. The other thing we're going to do is, I don't know if you can see it, but we have D-rings about every foot all the way down. Why are we putting these on? Two reasons. One is we can use them as a tie down with bungees. The other, we're going to put a seat on this. All right, before we do anything, we want to go ahead and put a little more air in this. It's getting, it's a, it's getting a little soft. Um, the way you do that on a standard paddleboard, in case you don't know, is there's going to be a valve back here. Now, this is the cap for the valve. And if you listen, I don't know if you heard it or not, but you get sometimes you get just a little squeeze of air come out. But this is the valve. You would actually use this to go ahead and drain it out uh, as well. This is our pump. Now this pump is one of the, shall we say, less expensive pumps. This is a single, it's a, a single action pump, which means it pumps on one stroke only. So you can hear it. Nothing on the upstroke. Downstroke, air. Now dual action will actually pump up and down. It's a little bit quicker. They're a little bit more money. Um, this just happened to come with a single action. Now the other thing that they do have on them is a gauge. So as we pump this up, this gauge will tell us how much air we have in here. And, and for this one, we're looking to have, uh, yeah, I'd like to have about 10 or 15 in here right now. You can imagine if this was a dual action, it'd be going twice as fast. Okay, that's about 10. And we're we'll gonna put our cover back on. Okay, now we can go ahead and start setting these up. All right, so we already have our pencil marks laid out. Um, use a pencil, don't use a pen. Take a lot longer for the pen to wear off than it will for the pencil to wear off. So we have these laid out, and they're laid out approximately 12 inches on center. Um, first thing we have to do is we're gonna rough up this surface within the circle as well as this. You can see how shiny this is right now. We just want to take some of that shine off. To do that, we're going to use some 220 sandpaper. One of the things that we're going to run into is we want to keep these things up fairly high. So we're going to have to just trim this back on at least three of them. This one, this one, and that one. To do that, a pair of scissors. 
you want to be parallel with the top of that D ring. Cut it straight across. This will be can butt this right up into there when we glue it and roll this down. So it'll be just like that. So we gotta make three of these. Then we can go ahead and, and sand these and uh, get them prepped. To prep these, it's gonna be pretty easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use some 220 sandpaper and we're gonna sand the bottom off. What we're trying to do is get all the, anything that's shiny off here. Now just to show you the difference. This is one that hasn't been sanded. This one has been sanded. It still looks like it has a little bit of gloss on it, but you want to, you can see it better with your eye than you can on the camera to actually see that you've scuffed off that, that almost like a glaze that's on there. I don't know if it must be from the processing when you actually make these, um, whatever it is must rise to the top, a wax or something. Then, on the paddleboard itself, where we have our circle, we are going to go around, and again, we're going to remove just the surface glazing. And you can tell when you, you've done enough, because if you, if you happen to catch it just at the right angle, you'll be able to see where you sanded and where you messed. Now you can see the little crumbs that we're, we're getting up on the surface. That is just the material that we're removing. So that one's done. Let's do the rest of them. Over here where these are going to go, you can see it's just going to overlap that black a little bit. Now, it's not this, this thick part. It's just this thin part, which shouldn't be a problem. But one of the things that we're going to do is as we go ahead and, and do our sanding here, we're just going to sand that edge just a little bit, just to make that transition a little bit smoother. The other thing that we have to do over here is where they put the pad down, if there is any glue in here, we just want to make sure we get in here and, and if we can't get the glue off, at least get it smoothed out so we can glue over it. Now, in retrospect, this was a patch that we had done. And um, if I would have known that these things were available, I would have replaced, I would have fixed that leak with the D-ring. So something to think about, if you do happen to, to get a hole in, in your paddleboard and it's on the side or on the top, and it's someplace that you could use a D-ring, Go ahead and get one of these. I got these off of Amazon, but you can go ahead and get these things. Um, these are about three inches, I think, and uh, use that to, to do your patch. And then you get a D-ring as a plus. Okay, now that we have everything sanded, we are going to go ahead and use just a little bit of rubbing alcohol and clean all the areas. So we want to get all this, this little dust that we had from our sanding. And if there's any kind of wax or anything, get rid of that as well. And we're gonna go ahead and clean the bottom of these. Again, this is just rubbing alcohol I'm using here. There's one. Now we're ready to start gluing. So we're gonna put at least two coats of um, this. We're using the HH66 vinyl cement on each surface. <clears throat> we're gonna wait about five minutes in between coats for them to, uh, to dry up, and then we'll be able to actually stick things together. 
Now, one of the things I wanted to, I've been doing the whole time is just giving these things just a little, little squeeze to try to get them to get a little bit of a curl to them. You don't want to do this once you put the glue on because once you put the glue on, if these edges touch, they're going to stick. So if you want to do any of this, make sure you're doing this before you glue it. So we're ready to go ahead and start gluing. Now this stuff comes with a uh, brush. And what I like to do is I like to just go around my work surface, put some paper towels, and I'll even, I think I'll even throw a piece of tape on here. Just so that if I make any drips with the glue, it's not going to ruin anything. And you just want to brush this on evenly, as even as possible. I always make sure I go over the line just a little bit. Okay, we've gone ahead and done three coats, and this is all dry to the touch. So we are ready. Oh, glue on there. We are ready to go ahead and put this stuff down. Now, we want to make sure we put this down. It's going down one time, and uh, once this all makes a connection, that's it. So you want to make sure you place it in the right position. So this is why we wanted to fill this uh, paddle board up a little bit, make it as hard as we can. So that's about it for that. Now this will get um, stronger as it cures. So over time, um, you know, within 24 hours, it should be fully cured. But this will just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, let's do the rest of them. Well, we're going to set these things up. I'll bring you over. We're going to set these things up. What we're going to do is set them so the D rings are going this way with the paddleboard. Yeah, I'll have to see how well this this is gonna hold. 
because this is the first time I'm actually putting these things on such a curved surface. But it seems like it's holding pretty good. There's one. Now these all are dry to the touch and we go ahead and set our D-ring in the direction we want it, put it on the lines where we want it. And then what I'm doing is I'm pressing the harder part down first, getting that to stick, and then going back and working this little skirt. As I was doing this, I got cold away for a few minutes. Um, what happened was then the rubber cement set up too hard um, and it wouldn't stick. So I had to go ahead and give this a, a fourth coat. So we got these, these few, we're gonna have four coats, um, but they are, they are ready to get stuck. So let's get sticking. If that happens to you, you know, if it gets too hard to set up, that it won't stick to itself. Just by simply adding an extra coat reactivates uh, the glue that's underneath it. Yeah, like I said, over time, this stuff will get stronger and stronger and stronger. So as long as you don't wait, you know, a day in between coats, you shouldn't have a problem. You might even have a problem after a day. I wouldn't take that chance. And again, we're, we're starting with the harder part, pushing that down, and then covering up the skirt. This is the last one. Everything is glued up. Okay, so we got everything done now. We got all of our um, D rings are glued in. So we now have uh, five on each side, plus the one in the front that we added. Uh, we got our seat in. So our seat has four um, clips that it holds in. I'm not sure if this is exactly where it needs to be. I think it actually may need to be up more, which in that case, we'll move these up to the front ones. Um, we have plenty of line here to make our adjustments with that. We really won't know that until we get this thing out of water and we're sitting in it, sitting on it, because this is a sit upon board. Um, we did get our, our other mount done. So we now have a fishing rod mount. If we wanted to use it for a fishing rod, we would probably use this as a camera. Um, so we could have a camera above us with the fishing rod on the front. If you kind of get the idea where I'm going with this, um, we're gonna use this thing to do some fishing. You have to make sure you subscribe so you can see some of those videos. Got a lot of plans for this thing. Um, you know, it's funny because this this really, it started out as being the, um, the one to throw away because it, it came with a manufacturer's defect that we were able to patch. Um, 
but now it's turning into our project here. So kind of anxious to get this thing out on the water, see what it can do. Let me show you what these things look like up close. So <clears throat> this is the seat, and it says H2OSUP right on it. So there you go. It's got a little picture of paddleboard. That's what the seat was made for. Um, so there we have it. The seat has four points that it mounts from. It's got adjustments with the straps. Um, this is the part you actually sit on, and that this actually keeps the, I guess, keeps the seat from moving around too much because you'll actually be sitting on it. Uh, there is a little thing back here, which uh, already looks like the zipper's broken. Um, who knows? But I can tell you right now, zippers and salt water do not mix. So. I will probably never unzip it, but um, yeah, we probably won't be using that. As far as these D-rings go, this is what they look like. You can see here's our cut. It's nice and smooth all the way around. Uh, we were able to go right over top of this piece of vinyl, and I'll tell you, you can. it feels like it's just a little lump, but you can barely feel it. So that's how all these look. That's our old patch. These back here will be used for um, cargo. You know, if we take this off, um, if, actually if we need to get it flatter, this will even unscrew. But we can go ahead and, you could put uh, life jackets back here. Um, we have these live walls we could put back here. A couple things we could put back here. The thing is, is uh, we have the option didn't have the option before so we come around looks the same over here and uh, that's about it so we are ready to get this thing wet so uh, we're gonna go ahead and let everything set for 24 hours and then we're gonna go ahead and, and take this thing out on the water so thanks for watching um, we got a lot of plans for the use of this thing so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you see them. Um, you know, this paddleboard started out as damaged from the manufacturer. And uh, the manufacturer actually replaced it and told us to just throw this away. And we fixed it, and we're, we're still adding to it. So tune in and keep watching, and let's see where this thing takes us. Thanks a lot. See you next time.